President Biden has reached an important milestone in shaping the federal judiciary. He's appointed 129 federal judges. According to the White House, that's more than former presidents Donald Trump, Barack Obama, and George W. Bush had at this point in their tenure. And among them, 13 black women confirmed as circuit court judges, more than all other presidents combined. And of course, he nominated the first black woman ever confirmed to the Supreme Court, Justice Ketanji Brown Jackson. But beyond the high court, President Biden's appointments could have a lasting impact on the ideological tilt of the federal judiciary. And joining me now to discuss this, Janae Nelson, president and director counsel of the Legal Defense Fund. Janae, welcome back to the Saturday show. Thank you for being here. Before, beyond the significance of the number, why should it matter to Americans that President Biden has this record of judicial appoint appointments? Well, because our federal judiciary has long been very unrepresentative of the people in our democracy. And our courts are so integral to our system of justice that we need to see ourselves reflected in them. We need to see the rich diversity of this nation on the federal judiciary. We also want to see professional diversity in the federal judiciary. Right now, it is stacked with prosecutors, with corporate business people. And what we want to see in this moment where our civil rights are being tested, where our civil rights are on the chopping block, is to have people who have a rich history of different experiences interpret the laws that will affect everyday Americans and future generations to come. And President Biden's record has just been outstanding in terms of diversifying the judiciary and making up for uh, frankly, centuries of discrimination that have prevented people from joining the judiciary and representing our democracy in a way that shows the rich, diverse, racial, ethnic, gender, ability, and professional mm -hmm. diversity that our nation can deliver. And the significance of these record judicial appointments throughout the federal judiciary is because that's the field team for the Supreme Court. <laughs> And so if you've got this rich, diverse uh, judiciary, that makes it possible for the Supreme Court to even more look like, look, look like America. So, you know, Shanae, the, the LDF recently herald, heralded the confirmation of the first black woman to the 11th Circuit, Nancy Abudu. Why is her appointment so significant? Her appointment is historic. Uh, Nancy Abudu is a civil rights lawyer she specializes in election law, but civil rights more broadly. She's brilliant. She's a dedicated public servant who has uh, spent her career devoted to public interest law. And she will be the first black woman on the 11th Circuit. And we're talking about Florida, Alabama, Georgia, that covers states that have very robust black populations who've never had a black woman be the arbiter of the very complex federal issues that come before that circuit court. So we're thrilled that we've finally broken through this historic record, but it's long overdue. We're in 2023, and the idea that we are heralding milestones of the first black woman being on a circuit court is frankly disturbing. So mm -hmm. we're very grateful that President Biden advanced this nominee and that the Senate confirmed her. And I very much look forward to the influence she will have on that circuit court. So today, let's switch gears and talk about police reform, which is a key issue for the LDF. In the three years since the murder of George Floyd, where are we on police reform? You know, it's a mixed bag, Jonathan. We are in a better place in terms of our language about public safety, in terms of our recognition that law enforcement is not the answer to every problem that we face as people in a very complex society, but we have not moved the needle enough, not at all, especially if you consider the uprisings that were not only multiracial, multiethnic, multigenerational across this country, but around the world. 
I, I met earlier this week with representatives of Canadian of the Canadian Parliament, Black representatives, and, and we talked about the influence that the George Floyd murder had on Black people around the globe in the diaspora, and the fact that there are new conversations happening across the world about the role of law enforcement, the militarization of law enforcement, the, the excessive force that Black people experience in any country that they exist in, in, in for the most part. And so we think that this moment is not over. The movement has not stopped. We certainly are pressing forward with reforms. We've issued a framework for public safety mm -hmm. that we've been sharing with lawmakers and decision makers and, uh, frankly, anyone who's interested in thinking about how we can actually make our society safer, not add more resources to a broken system, but to actually rely on data-driven solutions to public safety. And it begins with rethinking and reimagining the system that has failed so many of us. So, Janae, I just want to point out that the, the blueprint uh, for public safety that you're, you're talking about, it focuses on unarmed civilian responders, restorative justice programs, and increasing investment in community resources. Um, is this report uh, available online? Yes, it's a framework, and we are developing toolkits to support each pillar of that framework. And so you pointed out that one of the anchors of this is to make sure that you have the right responder for the circumstances in which you may find yourself. So if you are having a mental health crisis, you want the right responder to show up. If you are a, a young child calling to get help for your mother, like a Darian Murray, you want the yeah. right responder who can de-escalate a domestic violence circumstance and not see you come out of a room with your hands up and shoot you because we continue to adultify black children and see black people generally as potential criminal suspects automatically. And you're talking about that young 11-year-old in Mississippi um, who was shot in the chest by police after calling 911 for help.